Happy Mother's Day, all you gals. We uh, just want to pat you on the back today and say, wow, we're impressed. Want you all to feel right at home and worship with us, pray with us, sing with us, and fellowship with us. We love the Lord here, and we're glad you're here. Want you to feel right at home. If you have your bulletin, I invite you to join me on the inside of the page as we share our uh, call to worship together responsibly. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the ways of life. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Give understanding to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Let not, let not thine heart envy sinners. But be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Amen. That's good words right out of the book of Proverbs. Father, we bow in your presence this morning. We have come to celebrate Jesus and also to honor some precious, precious women in our life. Bless every mom that is here. Father, I pray that you would touch them in a special way, that they would know that you are ever present and you give them a day that is just glorious. Be with all of us, Father, as we worship you, Father. Those who have needs, may they find them met in you. Those who are weary, may they find rest. Those who are troubled, may they just simply trust you for all things. Bless this service. Let it be everything it needs to be. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. want to welcome you again, everybody that's here. There's a card that's going to be circulating around. And uh, if it comes to you, we're going to ask you to just sign it. It's for Tony and Diane Peluso, who moved to Florida, members of this church. It's just a little thinking of you card and a praying for you card. So if it comes to you, don't think it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> Please just sign it on the inside, right small, because we want everybody's signature on it. And uh, when it finally comes around back to this side over here, uh, whoever, whoever has it last, uh, Get it, get it to me at the end of the service, if you would, please. Order Robin. At any rate, thank you for that. If you get your hymnal now and turn to page 395, we're in our opening hymn, it's hard to find them for Mother's Day, but when I think of Mother's Day, I think of this hymn, page 395, Love Lifted Me. I'm going to ask us all to stand for our opening hymn. Beverly's going to come and lead us in this. Page 395. Thank you.
pause and give you time to brag on Jesus, which uh, I am never one to stop that. But maybe there's somebody here who just have a kind word to say about their mama. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm going to stand up and praise my mother. She's gone now, but I thank her for her reading to me in the Bible every night when I was a child. And uh, I just loved to sit there and listen to her read. She read, you know, different things, but I was little, so I don't exactly know, but I know Jesus was in it. And I thank him and I praise him for drawing me to him and touching my whole body. I just love him with all my heart. And I loved my mother. Amen. 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 Thank you. I love my mom, but she's not here. So I love my wife and my great sister-in-law, who are great <laughs> mothers and that really cares for their children. Ooh. Amen. I love my Hi. I was just about to open my mouth. I was going to say I love my mother. She is one of my best friends. And I'm so grateful for her. Wow. Mary. I love my mother. She was 91. But I've been in the Church of the Nazarene since I was in a wicker buggy. <laughs> a friend of hers came back from Switzerland and said, I know what church you should go to. First church of the Nazarene, Cleveland, Ohio. And that's where we went. And I'm so glad the Lord's been good to me. Blessed me with a wonderful mother. Yeah. And I'll never forget her. Amen. It's a wonderful. I know I don't go to church here, but I want to talk about that lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're here. People talk about mother-in-law's mark. But before you say the word mother-in-law, talk about a mother. Yes. This woman has been my mother for over 40 years. Yeah. I love her like you would not believe in this family. Look at the family i got. But that lady right there, I love her. She's my mama. Oh, that's precious. That's precious. I can thank God for a wonderful Christian mother. Raised a big family children and I don't know how she ever did it it was hard times I was born in 32 so that was sort of getting to the end of depression years but a lot of things I remember about my mom that I know she loved to sit just for a few minutes after everybody else had left the table and drink her coffee and I remember her saying Oh, I'll be glad when we can get coffee again. This stuff is awful. <laughs> <laughs> I loved her dearly. God, what a blessing she was to me. Yes. Ron. I want to thank God for a Christian mother that prayed for us. She was quiet and shy, but she was a wonderful cook and a wonderful flower grower, but she loved God. shall be praised. 
She shall be praised. Amen. Amen. And so many are filling that role today. God bless us all. God bless us all. We need to pray for some folks. We got people that are going through hard times and pray that God will walk with them and carry them and help them. We got folks that need a procedure and pray that uh, all things will work together for good and all things will go well and they'll get the healing that they're looking for. We got some that's just. Uh, Need a special touch, and we want to pray for them. You've got a list of names there that's in your bulletin every week. I trust that you will be faithful to it through the week and uh, keep them in front of you. Uh, last weekend, Rob and I weren't here, but uh, I bring back another request for you, and we shared this at prayer meeting, and then Wednesday night, Robin and our brother-in-law, Brian, diagnosed with multiple myeloma, and uh, we don't know the extent of it, but uh, God does. I'm going to ask you all to help us pray for Brian. He lives in Ohio, but God is able to touch anybody where they are. And uh, he's a wonderful Lord. So I would ask you to remember Brian. Are there others that you would like for us to pray for today? Debbie was having surgery Tuesday, and she won't be able to pick up her baby for six weeks. Oh, my. Now that is hard for a mom. And that's even harder on little Charles, <laughs> who was picked up. Anyone else? Penny. You will remember Caden, who gave Kelly a meniscus bruise. All right. sing this little chorus is our prayer chorus. I'm going to ask you to stand. If you would like to come to the altar and pray for yourself or for a special need or something going on in your life or for a friend, we go to prayer. You feel free to use this altar. Come and pray. Page 50, maybe you need it, maybe you don't. We're going to sing this as um, a prayer chorus. We're going to sing the first three stanzas, if you would. Beverly, would you come and help us? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Our Heavenly Father, we bow and we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Father, we fail to say that too often. We rush through life busy and going from one project to another and chores and work and errands and all. And Father, we fail to say thank you for your goodness. But Lord, we bow today. And to the best of our ability, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your hand on our life. Thank you for your blessings and mercy. Thank you for divine forgiveness for, Lord, when we fail. Thank you for all that you have done for us, whether we recognized it in the moment or not. Thank you for being that wonderful God. Thank you for each one who is here today and the way you're working in their life. Father, there are miracles here today. There are people that are only here but by the grace of God. For Father, you touched them. You spared them. You kept them here. And for that, we give you praise and honor. We will only know in eternity, Lord, of all the great works you've done. But Lord, today we say thank you. Thank you for all the mothers that are here. And Lord, the life that they're living... Thank you, Lord, for the way that you provide and help. I pray your blessings over each one. Give them wisdom. Give them grace. Give them, Lord, the strength to go in the name of the Lord. Father, for those who will have children about them today, let it be rich and meaningful. Let it be a wonderful time. For those maybe who won't see their children today, or maybe won't even hear a call from them, Father, we pray that you would minister to them as well. And that, Father, you let them know that you love them and you care about them. For those whose mothers are long gone, I pray that you comfort their heart and, Father, minister to them. And may the memories be a blessing to them today. And, Father, may you bring back to them a memory that has maybe been long gone for years, something to just encourage and bless and help on a day like today. Now, Lord, we've got a list here of a lot of names, and we just want to bundle them to you and, and say, Lord, have mercy. Those that need help, Father, would you be strong in their behalf? The request has been mentioned, a, a procedure on a meniscus. Father, for Debbie, who will have a procedure this week. In the name of Jesus, we pray healing over both of these that, Father, it will go as well as they are saying. The healing time will go quick. And that, Father, you will bless each one. Yes, yes. Father, we put ourselves in your hands and we say, Lord, have mercy. Help us, Lord, where we stumble. Forgive us for our blind spots. And, Father, help us to trust you even greater than what we do now. We commit ourselves into your care and say, Father, help us. Lead us and guide us. Watch over us in all our ways. Bless our stumbling steps. And Father, guide us on the way towards our journey with you. And now, Lord, as you taught us to pray, we pray together, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. That is, unless you want to share your memory verse. Good Nazarene's been working. Randy, you're standing up there. You you want to share the memory verse? <laughs> Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee I do trust. Amen. Somebody else, you've been working on it. Don't be bashful. We're all working on these every month there as well. Cause me to hear the loving kindness. 
this in the morning, for in thee I do trust. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Psalms 143.8. That's not the whole verse, it's just the beginning. Let's all say it together. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. And if you remember, we had a memory verse a few years ago. Isaiah said, rise and shine. Rise and shine. Well, this one goes right with that. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness when? In the morning. If you wait to listen to the Lord late in the day, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You start early. Have your devotions with God in the morning before the day runs off. Start with God. And a cup of coffee helps. <laughs> Wednesday night, Bible study. Join us, 6 o'clock, if you could. Uh, the youth as well. Um, talking to you about prayer this Wednesday night. Something that we could all use some help on. So, encourage you to come and, and join us. We've got a business meeting coming up uh, the 22nd, so board members take note of that. District assemblies at the end of the month. And I uh, would encourage you all to pray. Now, the preacher goes, and you've got a delegate that goes, but, you know... Uh, pray. Most of you won't be there, but you can pray that all things go well. And I would appreciate that. Got a lot of people traveling to go to that, so pray that God will keep them safe. Business will be done in a way that will glorify God. Everything will be uh, back in the day we used to say hunky-dory. Everything will go right. And um, we appreciate your prayers. This time I'm going to ask our ushers if they would come and help us as we Receive an offering under the Lord. Thank you, fellas. Brian, would you pray for us? Dear Lord God, we thank you for this day, and Lord, we just thank you for this house we can come in to worship yes. you and yes. to hear your word, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for all we have, for all we have comes from me. Lord, we just praise you for it. Yes. Lord, I pray for this offering we're about to receive. Lord, use it to reach those that are lost. Comfort those hearts that are good comfort. And Lord, most of all, may you be glorified through it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
This time, Heidi's got a special song for us, and uh, going to ask her to come and share. Heidi, it's always good to have you with us, and come up and share what God's laid on your heart. So before I sing, I just wanted to let you know I'm going to go through three verses, but I'm, after the third one, I'm going to repeat the chorus, and I would love to have everybody join in. By then, you should know the chorus. <laughs>
If you've got your Bible, I invite you to join us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Good to see you all. Glad you're here. Proverbs, chapter 1. And you're going to have to keep your Bible open. And I never thought I'd say it, but your cell phone on. For those who, your Bible's on your phone. Because we're going to be hopscotching back and forth in the scriptures. But in chapter 1, verse 8, Solomon writes, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of who? My mother. My mother. That's not incredible. Back in a time when they thought that men were chauvinist and sexist and all of that, here is the king of Israel who says, Oh, by the way, forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace under thy head and chains about thy neck. Father, we bow in your presence and we thank you for your word. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Use it today to draw us ever closer to you and to one another. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. A number of years ago, a gym dealer walking through the aisles of the Tucson Gym and Mineral Show noticed a vendor there full with a table full of stones, rocks, gems, and he noticed a blue violet stone that was the shape and size of a normal potato. It had a blue cast to it. He looked it over and very quietly set it down and asked the vendor, you really want $15 for this? The vendor looked at the odd looking rock and uh, realized others had picked it up and nobody bought it. The day was getting late. Sales had been slow that day and he said, would you give 10? He quietly and without his blood pressure getting too high, got his wallet out, handed the man a $10 bill, got the rock, and quickly exited because he knew that what he was holding was priceless. The stone was then certified as a 1,905 carat natural star sapphire, about 800 carats larger than the largest stone of its kind. It was appraised later at $2.28 million. The vendor let it go. For $10, he had no idea what was right there in front of him. But it took someone who really knew gemstones to appreciate what he was looking at. Here we are this morning, and we are thanking Jesus for a special woman in our life that you and I would refer to as dearly mother. Others in this world maybe were neighbors or co-workers, or lived up the road or down the road, knew her, talked with her. But those of us who really knew her over the years, she has become more precious and precious and precious to us. And we look at her today as priceless. Solomon, later in the last chapter, referred to that virtuous woman as her price is far above rubies. Now, I have shared with some, I approach Mother's Day with trepidation as a preacher. Of all the Sundays there are to preach, this is one Sunday that I come to the pulpit and I feel woefully inadequate. I have long felt that my wife should take the pulpit and preach. She would do a far better job than I ever could. Us guys trip all over ourselves when we try to talk about Mama and uh, what she means. So I'm going to just ask you to let the Bible speak to you today and do the preaching. The Word of God is timeless. What Solomon wrote years ago is still in effect today. It, as the man says, it tells the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It is here in front of us as uh, the Word of God. Chapter 1, verse 1, gives us the identity of the author uh, the Proverbs of Solomon. He was the son of King David. Solomon would ascend to the throne after him. But Solomon was not 
David's firstborn with Bathsheba. He was the second, but you Bible scholars, you good Nazarenes know that David and Bathsheba's first child died. The second child is his child of promise. His name is Solomon. And there was a thing between David and Bathsheba. There was an agreement that when David would die, that Solomon would ascend to the throne. That was a long-standing agreement. And I believe that both of them poured a lot of themselves into this young man's life and his character and development. So much so that when Solomon would write this, when you get to verse 8, which we read earlier, he refers to his father and his mother because both of them, I believe, had a huge part of his upbringing. I'd like to drill down on this of what he said here in verse 8. Hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. That's what King James says. If you have the NIV, it says teaching. I'd like to tweak that just a little bit and I would like to say mama's rules. If you looked in the bulletin, that's what I titled the message, Mama's House Rules. Because all mamas have rules. You may not appreciate them at the time, and you may scratch your head, but all mamas have rules. Don't matter whose house it is, there's rules. And the sooner we learn them, the better we are. You break them at your own peril. Don't hide dirty dishes under the couch or the bed, or anywhere else. They go in the sink. Don't put clean clothes on the floor. If you take them off the hanger and try them on, you decide not to wear them, don't throw them on the floor. You hang them back up or fold them up and put them away. Don't just throw them on the floor. You're just making busy work. Make your bed. Put your shoes away. Say please and thank you. Don't complain about mama's cooking. No, there'll be no yucks or ooh at the table. Eat what is set before you. Don't slam the door. Wipe your feet. Wash your hands. And yes, all two of them. <laughs> Hang up your coat. Use your manners. Answer when spoken to. Come when you're called. Do your chores. Finish your homework. Don't come home late. And the one that I will never forget is, if you made the mess, you clean it up. I've heard that, I heard it, and heard it. It's still bouncing around in my head. All parents have rules. That's a given. When children are young, they often look at other parents and say, gee, I wish I lived at their house. Their mom is not as strict. and it, they, get, they, they get along with a, lot, a whole lot easier life and what we're living and I don't wish I had a different set of parents. Well, you know what? Rules are good for us, and discipline is good for us, and uh, we learn something by strict parents. They, they guide us and keep us going in the right direction. Much of Mama's rules come right out of the Bible, and sometimes Mama quoted the quoted it as Bible, but we found out later it really wasn't. It was just Mama, but a lot of it come out of the book, book of Proverbs. And for that reason, I want to go back to Proverbs and uh, remind you some of what Solomon said and tweak it just a little bit of what my mama shared as well. Number one, if you're taking notes, I'm going to give you four thoughts today. Number one, maintain a reverence for the things of God. Maintain a reverence for the things of God. You see, when I was a child, little kid, mama took us to church. Now, daddy didn't go. Mama did, and uh, she. it was not optional. We had to go. We were taken to church, and uh, there was no, it wasn't up to a vote. But I was taught early on to respect and to reverence the sacred, the holy, and the spiritual. Believing in God was part of it. Living for God was another part, but <coughs> reverencing God was what it was all about. Which meant that when we got to church, I had to behave. I had to sit still. I had to be quiet. I couldn't be squirming. I had to pay attention. And I had to sit up straight. Now that's hard when you're a little kid and there's no padding on the pews like what's here. Those old hard pews and my little hind end, when I was back against the back part of the pew, 
My, my knees didn't fold over. These things are made for adults. They're not made for little kids. And I would get to hurting, and, and, and I, it was hard for me to sit still, and I'd start squirming. And that preacher could preach for hours. Well, really he didn't. But it seemed that way for me because being a kid that was just a handful, I just couldn't sit still for no time. So I improvised. I started parking, or packing my pockets with matchbox cars. So when he was just up there waxing eloquent, I would get them little cars out and I'd run them across the pews and, uh, and I would start making noises and... <laughs> And I loved it when I could get right there on the end because that little part of, the, of that I thought was a racetrack. And I'd run my cars up and down that. And the preacher would stop preaching. David Aldridge would just stop and stare at me. Right in the middle of the sermon. And then he would say to the whole congregation, all right, let's all come to church. And I knew that I was dead meat when we got home. Mama could reach over there and get a hold of me. There were four of us, but even if I was on the end, she had the ability to reach over and get a hold of my ear and twist it and pinch. And I knew I was in trouble. Robin had a mother just like that. If you were two pews away, I don't know how they could do it. They could, they could just reach out there, kind of like that mama in The Incredible. Say she could just stretch and she could have you. Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. As a child, I was taught the fear of the Lord. And uh, that may mean something different to you than what it means to me, but to me it's respect and awe. And I was taught as a child that God is in heaven. He is our creator. He is our maker. And one day I will and you will, we will all have to answer to God. And there's something that's lacking in a world that doesn't have a fear of God. And we have young people today who have no fear of taking someone else's life or breaking into a store or standing before the judge because ultimately there is no fear of God. We've lost something when we get away from that. Solomon said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now some of us learned the fear of God long before we learned the love of God. I don't know if that's wrong or not, but to me, they go together. You can't divorce the two. The fear of God and the love of God, the fear of God keeps us on a straight and narrow. The love of God brings us to the cross, and we say, God, have mercy on my soul. Forgive me. Come into my heart and be my Savior. The fear of God makes us sit up straight and listen. The love of God draws us into his realm, and we say, oh, I want to serve him. I want him to be my savior. There is something about a respect for God that mamas need to instill in their children. Number two, there is something that I heard over and over and over, and that is avoiding bad company. Parents need to set boundaries on kids as hard as it is, but, but we need to establish rules of who they can play with and who they can visit with and who they can hang out with, and who they can spend the night with, and, and, and all of that because there's a reason. There's some kids out there that are just trouble with a capital T, and good parents can discern the difference and say, no over here and yes over here. Look at verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Turn over to chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Verse 14. Chapter 4, verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Now, when you're a kid and you look at everybody in a naive way that everybody is it can be trusted and everybody is good, uh, it's hard to understand why mama says you can't play with that kid and you need to stay away from that kid and she says to the teacher, I want you to separate those kids. It's hard for us to understand and you'll never really understand it until one day you've got kids of your own. 
And one day you got your own, kid, your own kids and you're trying to navigate life and you're trying to figure it all out. And one day it all comes back to you and you find yourself saying things your mama said. And then one day you wake up and you realize you have become your mama. I, I like the story, and I've probably told this too many times, but there was three people, three men that was traveling together, and uh, they were on a, on a trip, and one was a Jew, and one was a Hindu, and one was an atheist, but he happened also to be a lawyer, and they were all in the same car, and the car broke down one evening, and uh, it's late, there's a farmhouse there with lights on, so they decided they'd go up to the farmhouse and see if they could spend the night and maybe get the car fixed in the morning, Three of them go up and beat on the door. A farmer and his wife come to the door. They explain their problem and ask if they could spend the night. He says, sure, but I have a problem. I only have two beds available. One of you is going to sleep in the barn. The Jew, being a very humble man, said, that's fine. The other two, you stay in the house. I'll sleep in the barn. The farmer gives him uh, a blanket and a pillow. The Jew goes off to the barn. The rest go to their room. It's not ten minutes. There's a knock at the door. Farmer and his wife get up. The other two come downstairs to find out what's going on. The Jew at the door says, I didn't know, but there's a pig in the barn. I can't stay in that barn. It is, it is, it is an unclean animal, and being a Jew, I cannot, I can't spend the night in the barn with a, with a pig. Well, the Muslim, or the, or the Hindu guy, he, he, he's being a religious man, he doesn't have that problem, and he says, that's okay, that's okay. You take my bed, I'll sleep in the barn. So everybody goes back to their bed, and the Hindu guy goes out to the barn with the blanket and the pillow, and it's not 10 minutes, and there's a knock at the door. And, and the farmer and his wife get up, and the others come downstairs to see what's going on, and the Hindu says to the farmer, I'm sorry, but there's a cow in the barn. I can't, I can't stay in the barn. To, to us, that is a sacred animal. I cannot sleep in the same place. There's no way I can't do it. Well, now the lawyer is the only one left, and he realizes, well, it's okay, but he has no religious affiliation at all. He, he, he could care less about anything sacred. So he says, all right, I'll sleep in the barn. And the Hindu and the Jew go off to the beds, and the farmer's wife lay down, and the lawyer goes off to the barn. And it's not 10 minutes later, and there's a knock at the door. And the farmer and his wife get up, and the other two come downstairs. He flicks the light on, and there stands the cow and the pig. <laughs> there are just some people you just can't stand to be around. There's just some people that it's not good for you to be around. And there's some people, mama and dad both will say, you steer clear of them because they're going, to, they're going to take you down the wrong road. You may not understand it. You may not appreciate it. But you need to listen to your mom. They know things you don't know. They've lived through things you haven't lived through. And it's wise to pay attention to it. The moral of the story is, uh, listen to mom. It is but by the grace of God and a praying mother that I did not end up like a lot of my classmates. They ended up in places that I don't even want to talk about. The grace of God and a praying mother made a difference. Number three, pay attention and listen to what you're told. Look at chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from their eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. One of my mother's most used phrases was, how many times do I have to tell you? Are you deaf? I've told you that a hundred times till I'm blue in the face. Anybody ever hear that? Oh, jeez. Over and over and over. I can't remember what she told me, but I can remember what she said. I've told you, and I've told you, and I've told you. had a message from mom on the answering machine that she called the house, oh, maybe four or five months before she really got bad and ended it up in the facility before she died. And I had saved it on the answering machine. And on a bad day, I could hit the button on the phone on the answering machine, scroll down through that, and I could hear mama say, hi, Mark, and then she went in with the message. I could hear my mama's voice. 
I told my sister about it, and she said, we need to get that recorded. And I said, well, yeah, you know, we really do. But I, I didn't know how to do that, and I didn't know what to put it on. But on a bad day, I could hit that book machine, go down through the messages, and there was my mama's voice saying, hi, Mark. The message wasn't really important, but it was, it was her. And I would recognize that voice anytime. It's not been that long ago now, it seems like, that I was in a hurry and, and I was going through the machines and, I, and, and so many spam calls that were just inundated with them and I'm deleting them and you know what I did? Yeah, I deleted Mama's call. And it happened like that. I was just, all those telemarketers and junk that comes in and I'm just in a hurry and I'm pushing buttons and... I'm always pushing the wrong buttons, but I, I deleted my mama's call. And I knew it, I knew it in a split second. It was gone. And I stepped out on the porch and I realized, there ain't no bringing it back. I don't know how many people have told me down through the years, I'd give anything if I could sit at the table for a half an hour and talk to mama again. To just talk and share. To just have my mama talk. And I listen. And how many times have we said, gee, I wish I would have wrote that stuff down. <laughs> I wish I would have just sat there with a notepad and she was sharing I would have wrote it all down because now she's gone and, and I can't remember it all. And how will I tell my kids and how will I tell my grandkids because I've I've had so many birthdays now, I don't remember it all. There's a reason why Solomon said here, attend to the words, incline your ear to the sayings. Mama said over and over and over to us, you better listen up. <laughs> well, that's Bible. It's right there in front of us. Lastly, and I've got to move on. Mama taught us to work hard and save for a rainy day. Turn to chapter 10 of Proverbs. Chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casts away the substance of the wicked. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. Both of my parents instilled in us kids the need to work and work hard. We were given chores. We were, there were responsibilities. There were obligations that we were to do weekly. Some was daily. Some was monthly, but we all had responsibilities and chores and uh, work hard, be responsible, do it right the first time. Growing up, my parents always had a big garden. And there were years we had more than one garden. Dad got with the neighbor and he let us have the bottom field and we put a second garden over there. He got four kids and mama took it as her responsibility to make sure that we always had food for the winter and she canned everything she could get her hands on. I mean, and we ate it. It didn't matter what it was, she canned it, we ate it. Daddy would find produce along the road, he'd buy it. it didn't matter if we had it in the garden, he'd buy it. Fruit, he carried in fruit constantly and mama would can it and put it away year after year after year after year. We all had areas of the garden we were responsible for. We had, we had these rows and my brother had those rows and my sister had those rows and my other brother, but we all had part of it. The Bible says in Genesis early on that God planted a garden because God planted a garden. Mama said we got to have one too and we had to work it. A few months ago, Robin wanted to know what I wanted for supper. And I already knew what I wanted because I had seen it on the shelf a week or two before. There on the shelf was a can of homemade vegetable soup The mom had canned. She loved canned vegetables. I mean, she canned everything, but in the later years, she loved canned vegetable soup, and then she gave it away to the kids and grandkids. That was presents. She loved to do that. She felt like it was the one thing she could do, she liked to do, 
And I knew there was a jar up there of vegetable soup. And Robin said, you know how old that is? I said, I don't care. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was actually good. And I relished the fact Robin heated it up. And it was good. It wasn't too old to eat. It was in a glass jar. It was still good. But I enjoyed it not only because it was good, but it hit the spot in more than one way. It hit the spot because it brought back a flood of memories of Mama in the kitchen and hard work and sacrifice and all that she ever did for us to keep her kids fed and, and to look after us all and provide for us. And I ate that bowl of soup. And let me tell you, we shared it and there was none thrown out. We ate every bit of it right down to the last drop and I loved it. But then when it was gone, I, I was like there with the phone message had been deleted. I got an empty bowl and memories. Memories of a mother that always provided and made sure that we were fed and, and maybe she would eat last to make sure we all had enough. And I thought about that and I went down memory lane thinking about a lot of things. But you know what? As sad as I was in the moment, the truth is it wasn't the last jar. There was more. Because Mama went out of her way to make sure there was always more. And uh, like the woman in Proverbs 31, it says, She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children will rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also, he praises her. She left behind a legacy of love and good works and sacrifice and prayer. And a long list of rules <laughs> that shaped us and made us who we are today. A healthy respect for God and a reverence for what is sacred and holy. Live for God all your days and honor Him with your life. Make Him your Savior. Stay away from bad people that will corrupt you. Listen to the rules and pay attention to what God is saying. Work hard. Do a good job. Make your life stand up at the end of your days when you look back. You've left something behind for those who will follow in your footsteps. Aren't you glad for Mama? Amen. Aren't you glad for Jesus? What will we do without either one? I'm going to ask you to bow your head. Thank you for being here today, but we can't close this service out without talking to Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for every family represented here. Thank you for the mothers that are here. Thank you for their life of love. Thank you for the memories that we have and we enjoy still. We pray, Lord, that you will bless each one here and may we be better because of that one called mother in our life. And Jesus, we love you and pray that you Lay your hand on our life in a powerful way and keep us faithful to the cause for the Lord that we know nothing would make Mommy happier to see her children walking with God. Now, Lord, give us a good day today. Give those rest that need it. Give those encouragement that are weary. Give those strength who are tired. And give those love who need it the most. But Father, more than anything, be with us all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
God bless you all. Thank you for coming to church today. I trust that you go out there and uh, be faithful and be a blessing to somebody. If you give me just a minute, Rob and I will meet you at the door, but I ask you all to stand. I'm going to ask Ron that if she will close the service with prayer, then you all be dismissed. God bless you for coming today.